stay tuned and let's take a look at this McFarlane DC Multiverse built to collect the Merciless Wave. Pow, and welcome back to the channel, Dan Who Reviews. As always, my name is Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram at it's Dan. Who. Today we are taking a look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse build to collect the Merciless Wave. So to build the Merciless, which you're going to need for your Dark Knights Batman sort of team up, you need all four figures in this wave. So I've got them here on the table, all out of frame, but they're all here. Number one is Robin, aka the Crow. It says Robin Earth minus 22. We have Batman, then we have the Batman who laughs again, and then we have the infected version of Superman. So you need to buy all four of these figures, and then you will be able to build the Merciless. As I said, the big brute, the Batman and sort of Ares hybrid uh, from that Dark Knights Batman team. So I'm looking forward to putting that team together and I'll be a little bit closer today with the Merciless figure. So I will take a look at these all individually because as you can see, they just don't fit on my review table. So let's just go through these nicely in order, starting off at number one with Robin. Now let's start off with Robin from Earth Negative 22. Now this is essentially an army builder and McFarlane actually have three different variants of this Robin out there in the world for you to try and track down. I've got the one with the big laughing wide open mouth which I'm quite happy about but he is an army builder when we first see these Robins in the sort of Dark Knight's Metal story they are accompanying the Batman who laughs they're his pets on a chain if you will and uh, yeah they're all creepy they just keep saying crow 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 so um, yeah this can be an army builder and with this chain you can get some nice poses I imagine with the Batman who laughs so I'm very curious of that may even try and track down some more for myself if you have one with a different alternative head let me know but as you can see in the box he comes with a big builder figure piece for the merciless the body and then his only accessory is the chain uh, which is a real metal chain as well which is a nice touch so yeah bigger packaging of course for the builder figure and as I said you sort of need this builder figure to complete that sort of Dark Knight Metals team and on the back you can see an image of that builder figure we've got section one here and then there are the other figures in this wave and there we have the Batman who as I've already mentioned with all those alternative versions of Robin all with different facial expressions with the chain so yeah I can imagine some really nice poses and some ABCA with this uh, guy uh, so yeah let's uh, let's get him open and take a closer look so here we have the contents of the box obviously there is the build to collect the merciless and as you can see it's just the same size as Robin so hopefully that build to collect figure is a decent size of course we'll take a look at him at the end of the video and uh, we get the trading card that we get with all of the these sort of DC multiverse figures, which I think is a nice touch actually, because it gives you a lot of bio of the character. So if you want to, you can pause it, read it now. But yeah, that's always a nice touch. Of course, we get a stand, but the only accessory really for Robin is this chain. So let's take a closer look at the figure. So as I've mentioned, there are three alternative faces for this Robin figure, just packed in randomly with assortments for you to try and track down an army build. I think I've got my favorite one of the three, the big open wide crazy grin. Uh, there are a couple of other expressions out there. I may even try and track them down to army build some of these crows. But yeah, I really like it. And again, let's talk about McFarlane. So if you're buying these figures, you know what you're buying them for. Not crazy articulation. You're just looking for some nice sculpt, some decent paintwork and detail and unique characters that we haven't had in figure form before. Before. So you know me, I'm not the ACBA guy. You don't come to me for posing. I just like collecting and building out these displays for my shelf. And I do think with the limited articulation with these guys, you can still get them in some nice poses. And again, I said paint and sculpt are the keys with McFarlane. And as you can see, I really like the sculpt work on it. All these details actually sculpted on here. So like these, uh, this bit on the chest, the belt, the scales on the trunks, uh, the glove, the Peter Pan style shoes, all very nicely sculpted. Uh, even the cape on the back is like a soft rubber uh, that will fling out but will fall back in place. And uh, there's a little bit there for the chain to attach to, which I will do in a minute. But let's just go over articulation. So the arms still go out really good. Single joint on the elbows, but it's not bad. It goes past 90. Head's got a lot of range as well, which you need for this sort of crazy style character. Uh, there is a nice ab crunch hidden underneath the sort of rubber upper torso. So look, look at that, you can bend him really far and then the sort of rubber will just bend with the articulation. So something nice is hidden there. That ab crunch is very impressive forward and back a little bit as well uh, and again the soft rubber sort of overlays the trousers and the trunk seem to be a separate piece the legs are not straight but again that's part of the character design and then we only get a single joint knee but again I think that's fine moving down to the shoes as I said you get a nice pivot there 
and uh, yeah, there is a pivot under there and a hinge and then also toe articulation as well, these Peter Pan style shoes. So again, for this character, I actually think there's a lot more articulation than you would expect for a McFarlane figure. And again, the, the paint's very nice. Clearly, this is Robin from some sort of dark negative universe as it's all the classic Robin that we know, but he looks like a sort of vampire zombie type vibe. Uh, so yeah, this is a lot better than I expected and the articulation on this guy is really good as well. The legs, look at that, the legs will go out but the sort of rubber of the tray the trunks will sort of fling them back in but uh, for the type of poses I'm going to have this Robin in uh, I think this is pretty good so yeah very happy with Robin Robin's only accessory is this chain and this is a real metal chain as well by the way so all you have to do is sort of link it to the sort of neck piece which you can see isn't attached so you just sort of have to pry it and then hook over the actual chain and now we have our Robin on an actual chain. And as I said, it's strong enough where we will just dangle and swing, but you wanna wrap this round the Batman who laughs and he's a, this crow sort of Robin is his pet. So I think this is a nice touch and I'm very impressed with this figure. I'm very tempted now to track down the others. So if you do have a Robin with a different face sculpt to mine, let me know. Next up, number two in this collect to build the Merciless is of course, Batman. And I know this is sort of a modern take on Batman, but I do like the character design with the greys, the yellows and the blacks. It's still clearly Batman, but just with a little modern twist. I love how he comes with these dual axes as well, which will sort of make him a little bit different to some of the other Batman figures I've got on display. And he of course comes with the build figure arms for the Merciless. Uh, spinning around on the back, again, I always love how it gives you the source of the character design so you can do your own research. All the other figures in this build to collect wave as well as the builder figure itself uh, and again this is number two so yeah modernized sort of batman but i like it let's get them open so here's Batman out of the box. So of course we get the Builder figure arms for the Merciless. I'll move them to the side. We will look at him at the end of this video. He also comes with the stand and then the card with the bio on the back. So as always, you want to read that. Pause it now. Take a look. Pretty good. And then we are left with Batman and his two axes. So let's zoom in and take a closer look. So out of the many Batman figures we have had so far from McFarlane, I still think this one's one of my favourites just because of the character design. I like the modern sort of look of Batman. And uh, yeah, this head school pretty good as well so the head and neck are all on one ball joint so the head range isn't bad at all definitely better down than it is up but you've still got side to side and then you can see it's like the ball joints in the neck there the cape is all one solid rubber piece let me zoom out a little bit all one solid rubber piece in sort of this flared sort of direction so when you've got imposed like that you can sort of see it fling into one side again yeah if wide cloth capes would be much much better but uh, again if you're just going to have your Batman static standing pose on the shelf I like how there's like a little bit of dynamicness in in there. Uh, the whole sculpt of the figure is all new it seems. Uh, you can sort of see all the textures and the patterns of this back design. There's a few like cuts and rips in there as well because obviously he's gone through some battles in this particular storyline. And then you've got the yellow against the black which stands out nicely for the bow and then the logo at the top. And the logo sort of emerges in with the cape and as I said the cape sort of all flares round and you can see that's nicely sculpted. Again soft rubber, uh, again nothing much under there. Moving down to the legs, boots, just grey legs as well. So yeah, nothing crazy, um, but he does come with a couple of axes, of course. So here's both axes. I do think, yeah, they're both different, completely different sculpts. Uh, but again, both axes that do the job. Uh, they've sort of got some wraps around the handles, then you've got the wood, and then you've got the actual axes at the top, which is in like a good metal grey type of colour. So will he hold them? Of course he will. So of course with McFarlane figures, we don't get crazy amounts of interchangeable hands and stuff like that. But the Batman does come with two gripping hands, of course, to hold these axes. And the range of articulation on this guy isn't bad at all. Let me zoom out a little bit. So the arms do have a double joint elbow on there. And as I said, they do go past 90. So you can get him in some nice poses, wielding these axes like up close and personal, over the shoulder or whatever you want to do. That's not bad at all. The arms are hindered a little bit by the cape. Obviously it goes over the shoulder, but there is a butterfly joint in there. Um, so you can get a decent amount of range like that's not bad at all then he's got the ball joint on the diaphragm so there's no ab crunch but there is a decent amount of movement like that's pretty good going back and then that's pretty good going forward so again people like to say McFarlane figures don't come with much articulation but this guy not so bad at all uh, the waist uh, again there is a swivel at the waist but it's at the top of the diaphragm so I guess there's not a swivel at the waist oh no there is there's another ball joint at the bottom of the waist so again lots of range so again no complaints from me on that one just make sure you line it all back up 
up probably when he's standing still. Legs go out that far. There is a double joint knee, of course, so the legs will go back that much, which isn't bad at all. So again, some decent movement. There is a bicep swivel as well. I should have mentioned that at the top. And then obviously you can swivel the thighs, but only at the top. There's no thigh cut. I know a lot of people complain about that with McFarlane figures. It would make a difference. And I know the people customize it. I know Bill Maru's the genius at it as well, but I'm not going to attempt doing nothing like that. Down to the boots. No boot swivel, but there is some swivel at the feet, of course. Pivot at the toe. Pivot? Yeah, pivot at the toes. And then an ankle pivot and a joint at the toes and um, yeah all that good stuff so again i don't really go over articulation crazy amounts but uh when it's controversial uh in regards to the figure uh, i do like to mention it but you can get this guy some good poses so no complaints from me to be honest there's already been tons of different batman figures from the filing so far but here we have the original the first batman figure we got from this multiverse line compared to this new one and again i do prefer the new one to the previous uh, i just prefer the character design but i don't hate either of them uh, they do their purpose as representing Batman on the shelf but I do think if you want one to articulate and pose and have some fun with then this version is definitely the better option. Number three in the collector build the Merciless is the Batman Who Laughs. This is the second version of the Batman Who Laughs and I believe this is the version where he's actually got uh, Hawkman's wings uh, but he comes with the builder figure head for the Merciless as well as some shoulder pieces and that big weapon is for the Merciless as well. So yeah we've seen this figure before but it has got a few changes uh, to the character design from the comics and on the back is that character design of the Batman who laughs with Hawkman's uh, wings. And you can see, I think that's a dead Hawkman right there. But he's number three. They're the pieces you get. There's the builder figure uh, for the Merciless as well as the other figures in the wave, all of that good stuff. Let's get him open. So here we have our creepy Batman and Joker hybrid, which is of course the Batman who laughs. Who's quite a modern character within the DC universe, but is a creepy memorable one at that, definitely causing havoc. So we've already had one of these, but again, he's had some upgrades and again it's very story specific uh, but he of course comes with the build figure pieces for the merciless so i'll slide them to the side we shall build him at the end of this video he also has a stand as always and as well as a trading card with the bio on the back so definitely pause it read it now if you want to learn about this guy but uh, yeah, let's take a closer look at this guy and put on his wings. Before we put the wings on, let's just take a look at the figure. So the mouth is big, open, creepy, Joker-esque with the sort of glossy paint over the reds and the pinks of the mouth, which is very nice. So it sort of shines under the light as well as those dirty teeth. No eyes because he's got this sort of spiky harness headpiece on. And then we get the actual Hawkman harness as well. Uh, that sort of shows the difference between that and the previous figure. But he's still wearing his big trench coat uh, with all the sculpted sort of detail in there and the holes and just the nastiness of it and that's like a soft rubbery piece but that's sort of attached to the top torso so you can't remove it uh, but it does move out the way enough to give you some articulation and what down at the bottom of the legs but it's all very black and dark but all the sculpted details are there just not any sort of dry brushing or paintwork to sort of bring out because you can see like broken harnesses and rips and holes and tatters and different textures and again even at the top here you can see the big red for the Hawkman as well as the belt and then we spin it around you can see the harness again and that is where you put in the two wings so yeah overall like McFarlane always do great paint and uh, sculpt work uh, for these figures but they're just lacking other areas uh, but again it's each to their own so let's try and plug these pieces in so we get the wings and these wings, let me just zoom out a minute. These wings are very nice, by the way. Very nicely sculpted, uh, all feathery, uh, just all sort of a gray color, if you will. So I'm going to plug these in. So it doesn't tell you which way around these go. So I'm just going to guess it. So I'm assuming they plug in as simple as that. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Simple as that. So that's very tight, by the way. Very tight, but it seems to work nicely. Uh, and the second one, let's do that. So forcing it in. I haven't heated this up, which is probably a bad idea, but they do slide in very tight. Then you just twist it and there we go. So there we go. What are we thinking of that? Let me zoom out a minute so you can see what's going on. And pow, that's not bad at all. Like I didn't think I needed this figure, but I needed the Merciless. So I was buying it regardless. But now I've got it in hand. This guy's pretty good. So those wings articulate outwards like that. And that's a pretty good span on the shelf. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. And then we don't get no interchangeable hands, but he has these creepy sort of pointy sort of fingers and yeah this the mouth is obviously different to the previous version which i'll do a comparison for in a second to quickly go over articulation as i said in the back they plug in nicely and there is some articulation on the wings so you can sort of stick them out like that but again it's a balanced game to get him standing up and their wings will go like, like that so again there's enough 
sort of articulation in there to get these posed up however you want. I like them as lot. Like the hinge is there and then there's also the hinge at the back as well in there. And they fit in there very nicely and tight, by the way. So no complaints for me. Fold up nicely as well and they can sort of, uh, they sit firmly in place is what I'm trying to say. Now the head will go back quite a lot. So if you want to get them in a flying pose, you're going to have to do it. That head goes back really far considering he's got a big spiky headpiece. The arms are obviously going to be hindered because of his shoulder pads. You can still get the arms out, but you can't really get them forward. But again, if you've got him flying, heads up, maybe he's flying like that. Maybe it works. Uh, there is a double jointed elbow and that's pretty good. You can't, that, you can't, look at that. You say there's no articulation on a McFarlane figure, but that's way past 90. That's really good range on the shoulders. The legs are going to be hindered because of this uh, sort of jacket, but there is double jointed knees look which work out pretty good. And obviously you just need to move the wings out of the way. And then there is a bit of pivot there at the feet. But again, mine's, mine's knees heating up a little bit. So you can see my legs a little bit warped out of packaging. So it's not sitting straight. So it's going to be hard for my guy to stand up. But he has got the toe sort of hinge as well. And there is a bit of an ankle pivot and whatnot. But uh, the waist, yeah, it's pretty hindered. Uh, there's not really any crunch forward or back, unfortunately. Oh, there is actually. I just heard a snap. Oh, okay. So there's the snap back. Um... So now with all of this articulation and the head going back, that's not bad at all, is it? He's leaning back now a little bit. So I'm assuming it's hidden forward as well. See how it's like a soft rubber that sort of folds? So there's definitely some articulation in there, but it clicks backwards better than it does forward. So for flying poses, that's not bad at all. So uh, yeah, maybe get yourself a flight stand and this guy is going to stand out on the display. So here we have our comparison with the previous release, Batman Who Laughs. And you can see this character design still creepy, but he's got the big grin on his face and this one's got the big wide open mouth. I'm assuming you can swap heads. I might try and do that in a minute. They've both got the long gangly legs, which make him difficult to stand, especially now this guy's got the wings on the back, makes him very back heavy. So you sort of have to balance him to get him to stand. But of course, you could always use the stands that come with the figures if you wanted to. But I like getting them freestanding and uh, they both do stand. But again, you need to maybe warm up the legs because my one's a little bit crooked there and as you can see he went tumbling over very easily but again if you just get this guy's wings out very nicely and again the articulation on them is great and um, look how big and more sort of commanding this guy is and more of a presence on your shelf if you will and um, uh, they've got different hands but you might be able to get him holding the weapons maybe but uh yeah definitely pick which version you want if you're a fan of the comics maybe one version sticks out to you a little bit more than the others but uh yeah this guy is much better than i thought he was gonna be impressed and then the fourth and last figure you need in this build to collect Merciless is Superman. But not the Superman we know. It is infected Superman. Like a zombie style Superman, if you will. Uh, he comes with the legs for the Merciless as well as some interchangeable hands. We spin around. We see the comic image of the infected Superman and some source material. So you can do your research down the side. As well as the other figures in this wave and the pieces you get for the Merciless. All good. Let's get him open. So here we have our infected Superman out of the box. He comes with the builder figure legs for the Merciless. The last piece we need so you know what we're doing next we are building the merciless so stick around any minute now we'll be building that guy he comes with some interchangeable hands which is nice because that doesn't usually happen with mcfarlane figures and of course the stand and the trading card with some information on the back so if you like me needed to learn about the infected you can do so by pressing pause on the video right now and then you will find out that batman infects himself with the super villain's deadly nanotoxin and goes undercover as one of the infected that is why clark kent looks like a zombie so let's uh, zoom in and take a look. So just like the Batman who laughs, I didn't think I needed this guy in my collection, but I needed the Merciless Builder figure. However, now I have him, he looks very nice. I like the off-tone sort of Superman uh, design as it's not blue, it's got a purple tint to it. And then of course the skin tone's a little bit whiter. He's got the darked out uh, around the eyes as well as the whited out eyes with the Joker grin. And he's still got his trademark quiff. You can see it's there sculpted coming over the forehead. So it's still the Clark Kent that you know and love, but he's infected himself to uh, try and help infiltrate the sort of Dark Knight Metals crew. And yeah, it looks good. His cape is all ratty and tatty. Zoom out a little bit. Uh, and that's made of a soft rubber as well. So when you've got him standing just normal, it sort of looks a little bit more fun, a bit more dynamic on the shelf. And this seems to be like a new body mold. As the previous Batman, uh, previous Superman, sorry, never had double jointed elbows where this guy does. So this is like an upgrade of the previous Superman, even though he's infected. Um, but yeah, again, you can sort of see the purple shine through uh, rather than blue, which I didn't expect. I, I thought it was blue, but uh, nope, definitely more of a purpley tone. Goes off good against the reds as well. Still yellow shining through, but yeah, overall, this is a nice looking figure. So let's zoom out, go over articulation. So the arms go all the way up. There is a slight butterfly, not crazy, but you can get the arms any way you want. Uh, the ab 
crunch, no crunch, but there's a diaphragm joint at the top and it seems to be one under the trunks as well. Yeah, it does, just a little bit. Legs go out a little bit, double jointed knees, uh, but they don't go too far back. And then there is a boot hinge and then a little pivot. You just got to manipulate, you know the score. So considering McFarlane figures don't have great articulation, I think this guy on a flight stand, you're going to get him looking pretty good uh, to infiltrate with your bad guys on the display. But yeah, just on the flight stand like that, that guy's going to look pretty good. You cannot, cannot deny. Uh, let's do a quick comparison. So here we have Clark Kent, the first Superman, and then here we have the Infected. So you can see straight away how the blues are really different. One's definitely purple, one's definitely blue. But the costume is obviously there, still the same. Uh, but this guy's got better articulation than this one. Uh, this cape's a little bit harder as well, where this one's made of that softer rubber. Uh, so if this cape was a bit softer, it would be better. But again, if you've got him posed up, you want the cape flaring a little bit. But uh, you can see how this guy's arms only has the single joint. So you're only getting them to 90 if that where this guy's arms literally go look at that that's really good compared to that so uh yeah why can't we have this style this design of superman on this body uh, just just change up the cape and the colors and you're good to go um but yeah you're not going to be able to do any head swaps or anything like that skin tones are all different maybe if you're a really good customizer you can give it a go but this body is definitely better than this body and uh, we don't even get interchangeable hands with this guy where with this one we do so we get a set of fisted hands, of course, which you need Superman to have. But we also get a set of these big, creepy sort of grabby hands. Now, these hands look massive. They look a little bit too big for the body, to be honest. And uh, maybe I need to plug them in a little bit deep on the pegs. But uh, yeah, very big grabby hands that you may be able to get in some cool poses but it's nice to have uh, that option because as i said with mcfarlane it's not really something you get you don't get interchangeable heads you don't get interchangeable hands but sometimes changing the hands can really change the way the figure looks on display so uh, i do appreciate getting them but uh yeah considering this is an, an infected superman it's probably better than this version and here we are at the main event. Of course, the build to collect the Merciless, the Batman slash Ares hybrid from the Dark Metal storyline. So you need the four figures, which is a nice round number to get a builder figure. So you cannot complain. By four figures, you get an extra one, and this guy is massive. So to do that, of course, you need all the figures that I've reviewed in this very video, which include Robin, Batman, Batman who laughs and infected Superman and you will have all of these pieces on the table so you know the score I'm going to pause the camera and put this together but I'm sure you can figure it out pow and here he is the merciless I definitely advise warming up the joints and putting this guy together but once it is done it looks very impressive let's take a look at the size real quick so I've got the tape measure out how big is he so from the table he's over nine inches tall which is really good so he's going to stand out amongst some of the other Dark Knight metal Batman that we have. So uh, yeah, this guy just is impressive. As I said, this is a Batman slash airy sort of hybrid. Um, and yeah, this is this is good. Let's take a let's zoom in and take a closer look at all the detail. So there we have this evil sort of airy style helmet with the bat ears sticking out. But you'll notice as well on the chest, you've got the Batman logo. That's a bat with the WW in there for Wonder Woman. Because this is technically from sort of negative universe where Batman and Wonder Woman emerge with the Ares armor, maybe something like that. Someone more intelligent can tell me. The, the thing about these builder figures is you don't get a trading card for the builder figure, which is unfortunate. But uh, that would have told us all about him. But I suppose we can Google it. Uh, but yes, there we have the green grill across the face which sort of looks like big teeth which I quite like but it's like a grill and again the bat ears with the red eyes which look very menacing again to the shoulders oh there's his sword let me let's take a look at the sword since it's nearly poking us in the eye uh so there is his sword big metal sort of gold sword with all that sort of sculpted detail in it as well sort of uh pretty good and again all the detail on this guy is really nice you've got the school there with these sort of chains but these chains are plastic and the blue it's like a metallic sort of blue shining under the light but you can see all the sculpted detail with all the textures you can sort of see some sort of chain metal under there and then these layers and again these shoulder pads are on a ball joint so they don't get in the way of articulation but again it's quite stiff you can hear it clicking a lot there you go but it will come out a little bit and then there is a single joint for the elbow, which doesn't even go to 90, but I'm not mad about that. There's a hinge for the wrists as well, but I need to warm them up. They're very tight, but you have got a hinge in there. Um, so you just got to be careful. There is a ball joint on the waist 
and at the top of the diaphragm. So you do get a bit of wiggle and movement. Moving down to the legs, this sort of skirt piece sort of limits it because uh, the legs are attached here at the thighs. So there isn't really a thigh cut because the way it attaches, it's sort of like you can see, it doesn't let you spin it, which is unfortunate. They should have just had it straight. But the reason they've done that is so it matches with the sort of pattern of these diamond sort of shapes going down. So it plugs in to sort of make it look flawless with when it's all connected together. And I have to admit, once it's all put together, if you're just gonna leave them standing there on the shelf, then he looks very nice, but he may be limited in regards to what poses you can get him in without arms and stuff popping off out of the sockets. But just as a piece to stand there amongst all your other evil Batmans from the negative metals universe, it's pretty good. You've got the dark gray here contrasting against the sort of shiny metallic blue. Um, but yeah, this guy's looking good and he's still got this, look at the toe hinges there sticking out. So there's his toe hinges and the legs. Yeah, you have got a double joint, I think there. No, it seems like a single jointed knee. The arm is sort of meet there and won't let you go past. So for a builder figure, it's a bigger figure. So of course it's gonna be even more limited in regards to articulation than other characters and figures in this wave. But just for a piece, and just think this is a free figure. You buy four figures, you get these pieces to build this one for free technically. So um, yeah, not bad at all. I'm liking it. And just to show you how big the Merciless is, here he is compared to the Devastator, which is a massive, figure in itself. This is a blunt object that could be a lethal weapon if you hit someone in the head with it. Very chunky and heavy, but it came single packed. This guy was the builder figure and you can see why now. He is massive, uh, definitely taller than the Devastator. Remember this guy is the Batman sort of Superman doomsday hybrid. And once you start piecing out this team, here we have the murder machine, which is the Batman and Cyborg. And then here we have the Dawnbreaker, which is the Batman and Green Lantern. Now we just need the Red Death, which I've got. I just need to open it up, uh, which is the Batman and Flash hybrid. The Drowned, which is the Batman and Aquaman hybrid, but it's a female in that universe. These are all teamed up with the Batman and Laughs to make this evil sort of dark metals team to take on Batman. And yeah, unique storyline. And it's going to make an epic display. And that's why I say bravo to McFarlane, because they're giving us character designs and versions of these characters from the comics that we've never had in figure form before. And they're giving us full teams as well. Like, as soon as I got the Drowned, I'm gonna do another video and put this whole team together on camera so you can see how impressive it is. But uh, yeah, so far, so good. So final thoughts, I am more than impressed with this McFarlane DC Multiverse build to collect a Merciless wave. I was honestly just buying this wave to get the Merciless so I can complete my sort of Dark Knight's Metal lineup with the Batman Who Laughs. But now I've got them all on the table. I think I'm going to keep them all. Look, I didn't even think I needed an infected Superman. But just look how good he looks up there, posed up with the rest of these figures. Very impressed. I know McFarlane is a bit hit and miss, but you have to sort of say bravo for sort of picking characters that have never been made in figure form before. When I say characters, you know what I mean. Particular character designs from the comics that have never had figures, never had representation in plastic, and now being made. And the sculpt works great. The paint work is great. Yes, it limits articulation, but if you're like me, you just want to get them posed up nicely for display, then you can't complain. Look at that. They look great. Very happy. I want to get some more crows now. I can't wait to complete the lineup of that Dark Knight's Metals for my display. Very, very happy. But everyone's experiences are different. And my isolated experience with this set of McFarlane figures has been nothing but good. Very happy. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you a fan of this McFarlane DC Multiverse line? Do you wish for something different? Are you, like me, confused that we've actually got the complete Dark Knight's Metal team before we get a traditional Justice League? That's very confusing. That's something I want, but hopefully that's what the future holds. Uh, we shall see. But you let me know in the comments below and you know what to do. Support the channel, watch more reviews, and please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And if you are in a position to support the channel a little bit more, you can on Patreon. Links in the description below. But until then, people, follow me on Instagram at it's Dan Who, And you can tweet me as well at Dan Who Reviews. And as always, my name is Dan W. And I will, of course, see you on the next one.